Thank you very much, uh, Rosa. Thanks to the organizer, organizers, Moderna Organi uh, Foundation, for inviting me here to be here today and sharing the panel uh, with the two people whose uh, presentations I've really enjoyed. Uh, I've enjoyed, I liked what Amario said about the V, him being the uh, the valley in the middle with two uh, bodyguards, on, with his cousins being two bodyguards on the other side. Uh, often we tall people stand out a lot. I'm going to talk a little bit about talent and, uh, talent and employment. I have learned a lot from the uh, previous uh, presentations, and I'm going to continue I want to talk a little bit more about the teams in the organizations, and the teams are what uh, make the company be a, a living being in an ecosystem and makes the ecosystem expand and uh, Employment will exist if there's economic activity. Without economic activity, there will be no employment. There's a lot of um, discussion about uh, stimulation, but there is one thing which is very simple. If only if there's ec economic activity, if there is productivity, and if there's a demand for what is produced, is there a de employment? And uh, if not, there's a lot of sorrow. And to create economic activity, we must know our potentials. We must set out strategies. We must also be clear that the ecosystem changes. We often don't realize that in life, changing the ecosystem means there's a change in mindset of the people, of the companies, of the administrations, because if we don't know, don't we run the risk of not adapting. And the same occurs with nature and other sources. If we talk about di biodiversity, this always enriches, it stimulates, it's creative, because in the end of uh, ecosystem is biodiversity. The more biodiversity, the more wealth, the more stable in time. An ecosystem that is, uh, has no, not much biodiversity will have more difficulties to adapt. This is the history of humanity, and as you know, uh, the planet has existed for five billion years. There's been an evolution of the species of animals. And that is an example of how to adapt. As a company is a living being, we could use this example. Who lived in the planet years and years ago? The dinosaurs, the large reptiles. Here, there are a lot of uh, footprints of dinosaurs. They flew, they ran, they were kings of the uh, planet. And when the kingdom of the dinosaurs, the paleontology said that is when the first mammal appeared, a very tiny rat, fearful, who hid away, who covered, uh, hid away from these enormous dinosaurs. And among the dinosaurs was the T-Rex. The T-Rex was a formidable killing machine. We all have uh, cousins, grandchildren who uh, uh, have uh, a book of uh, or, or a model of a T-Rex at home. Everybody has one. But at that time, uh, the rat wouldn't uh, like to have the um, T-Rex near them. If we had a time machine and we looked at that uh, killing machine of T-Rex, if we were the rat, what would we think? Well, well the rat has no future because this uh, mis killing machine will tread on it and kill it. So the world is made for the dinosaurs. Uh, whatever happened at that time, science will know what happened, the meteorite, whatever, but something changed. 
the dinosaurs did not adapt. They became extinct, and that little rat that had no future adapted, triumphed, knew how to adapt, knew how to develop, multiplied, and now gives rise to the mammals. And Darwin saw all of this had, uh, and covered all the decalogue of the creativity that Amalia has talked to us about and began to coin some things where talent has a lot to do. First of all, not the strongest one uh, survives. It's the one who knows how to adapt better, the person who is more flexible, not the strongest, the one that adapts best. Secondly, and this is something important, it's um, if the person who doesn't adapt dies. If And therefore, whoever doesn't adapt dies. Companies die every day. And uh, an investment, if you make an, in an investment, well, 80% uh, fail. And this is something that you must know about. If you don't adapt, it is very important. There's a beauty in the epic to fight, to survive. The, we're going to compete. And in the end, this is something that rejects us. We aren't, we like, but times have changed, times have changed. And uh, I, the lyrical uh, things are very important. At night time, we light the fire, we tell stories, etc but the one who doesn't survive dies. And this is very important to take into account with these two characteristics. In, this is something I do in my organizations and in the institution that I work in, and the consultancy is a sector. It's there's a, making a permanent effort. Have, there's a question that everybody has to ask. Have you got the soul of the T-Rex? We have to think about uh, what we are good at. Have you got a soul of the T-Rex or not? Here we have to create another values. What can we do that in the they must be is uh, very rigid, very strict. If you're in the world of ideals and values, there is a very little can be done. There is a lot of resistance in the meta scale. And there, there is an enormous T-Rex that isn't going in the institutions that isn't going to let us do things. But there is a lot of optimism too. There are a lot of companies that do are set up, started up, and, and do adapt and survive. I travel a lot in the Sahara. They say that the, the, the about the talking about the desert diversity. The companies are becoming very competitive because they are creating a new culture, and this is something that I see every day. Things are changing. If you try to understand or participate in this change, not just the passive adaptation, you are active. And the third part is to be optimistic 
because in the end that the history of the planets, there have been uh, five mortalities, there have been five moments when there were deaths due to the climate changes. And 95% of the species died at one time. And then what happened? Well, that species didn't appear again. What does all of this mean then? That when the ecosystem changes, people who don't adapt are going to die. And when you are dying, maybe you think there's no future and you see that everything is dark. And before you realize it, part of them are going to adapt and survive, and new forms of life will appear as well. This is what has always, always occurred. Carlos can talk about this, the different forms of life are appearing, and others are surviving. And there is another topic as well. Attitude. This should make us think, are we spiders or dinosaurs? We don't believe that the world is going to finish, to end. Some species will die, others will be born. And it's important for us, not only as employers, as companies, but as people. Where do, should, do we want to be? Do we want to be on the dark, to see everything dark? or say, I'll, I want to be one of those that survive. So this is a very important attitude that leads to motivation, working in team, transferring optimism, values. This attitude is absolutely fundamental and vital these days. And uh, the good Darwin and neo-Darwinism states that this is the driving force of uh, mutation. So our bodies will be more adaptable to those new circumstances. So, uh, uh, I mean, random is there, it's, it occurs, and we need to uh, be wise enough to make the best of the good times and to avoid the bad times. When you make the biggest mistakes in your life, you feel euphoric because when there are too many uh, years, consecutive years of good times or good luck, you are going to make a big mistake for sure. So the important thing is how you manage uh, random and good luck uh, in our lives. So our future cannot be left at random, randomly. We as people, as organizations, and hopefully as countries, we need to do our best with plans, talent, and intelligence. And I very much link talent and intelligence. And Amelio has mentioned it before, the importance of doing things. We need to do things, not do not, no, don't only theorize. We are all very good at having coffee or having a glass of wine and, and uh, well, save the world. And this is, um, I'll be very brief, and uh, we have very distinguished speakers today, but talent is directly linked to doing. Talent, um, a talented person is a person that knows how to do things well, how to do something specially well. A company is an organic being with a collective talent. It's an organization that does things specially well. Intelligence, seven doc courses, seven doctoral theses, and very briefly, we can use any nuance, but if talent is shown by doing, intelligence is shown by choosing, by making choices. A per intelligent person is the person that is capable of building up different alternatives and cho choosing the best one, the most suitable one. Talent is shown by doing, is demonstrated by doing, and intelligence by choosing. There are many types of intelligences with tools, etc. And there is a very important nuance, in my opinion. Nowadays, we are highly motivated by talent, and this is absolutely true. 
challenges knowing how to do something well. This has several facets, um, creativity, motivation, effort. Uh, is talent born? I mean, or, or done? I mean, nature or nurture? There are some innate capabilities, but there is also another ingredient that comes from motivation, from effort, etc. And that's uh, teachers and educators develop those talents. But my idea, and this is not usually said, I, I was never said. That. My mother told me, used to tell me, boy, the important thing in life is being good, a good worker, a hard worker. If you work, you will be successful. I mean, you can reach any objective. This is a sine qua non condition, but it's not enough. After many years, a long life, I've discovered that most of all of us are what we've worked. But an important part is what we have decided, decided the decisions we've made. Our decisions mark our lives, and they are tremendously important both uh, in the professional and personal lives. I mean, <laughs> I'm sure you will agree with me. So look uh, at yourselves on a mirror and uh, discover uh, whether you are resu uh, the result of what you've done or the result of what you've decided. If a company took a wrong decision at any moment in the past, when a person has a, makes a wrong decision, the more <clears throat> it doesn't matter how many hours you invest, how much talent you invest, probably that person won't come out of that hole. So we devote years of, to train ourselves in attitudes, in experience, in work, in talent, etc. It's sensational. But we devote very little time to decision making, to see where we are heading to. So combination of talent and intelligence is so important. The thing is that Intelligence is hard, hard to achieve. Mm -hmm. Same as other things, self-esteem, status, etc. Vocation, intelligence, we tend to lack trust on it. Uh, you know, you feel un uncertain when we are in front of something very intelligent. We tend to be distrustful, to be suspicious, it, provo it provokes um, unease. And that's why decisions are Im so important and they are hard to make. We need to make many decisions throughout our lives. And uh, so this is really important. And those of us that uh, take part in organizations that make decisions, Decisions mark our future, shape our future. The project I've chosen, the line, which sector where I to invest my money, which degree to study, should I change or not? Life is complex. So I share, I agree with Amalia. It's good to change, to make mistakes, to extend, but be careful with decisions because they shape our future. We pay too much attention to doing, and we consider that deciding is a minor thing, but you are at least at as much what you've decided to as what you've done. And well, study, study it, I mean, consider it, what you've done in your, in your lives. Hmm? So what you've decided has shaped you much more than the number of hours you've studied in your life. So apart from decisions, those that finish, academic uh, disquisitions, we need to consider to tackle human talent. Daniel Goldman wrote that book called Emotional Intelligence. We need emotional intelligence, otherwise something wrong at home will be going. That's funny, and I read that book some years ago, and I really enjoyed it. It impressed me by it. I liked it. He tried to establish a relationship between IQs and analyzed uh, lives of people according to their IQs at school. So he applied the inductive model, uh, top down or down to top, top down in my case. I belong to the first generation of the EGB, the prim equivalent to primary education. And that was a pedagogical re revolution in Spain, the, e the basic education. Spain was becoming modern. 
in the 60s. So we worked in, bro in groups with sheets, you know, algebra, all those new contents, new knowledge. And psychologists uh, landed on our schools, arrived to our schools. Psychologists, I had never heard that word before, my mother either. So psychologists are people that read your minds. That's what my mom told me. And we were really scared about psychologists. So I'm sure you've done those IQ tests. They are a um, series of characters and numbers or logical sequences. You made an effort to fill that test. And you went to your home, and two, three weeks after that, your parents had to go to school and visit the teacher to comment on that uh, test. I was feeling quite unease. I mean, I had my teacher and my parents um, giving their opinions about my life. And I was hearing that, and you know, imagine my face about what, what was my results, my outcomes in maths, in physics, in engineering, etc., etc. I had very good skills, very attitudes. And he said, you have 84 IQ. And the final recommendation was about, uh, this is highly confidential. Only you and your parents can know about that. Needless to say that the day after, every day, everybody at school in the classroom know who was the bright mind, who was the, deaf, the dumb, who was the least intelligent, etc., etc. So I'm sure you will all remember that. We all agree on that. But that's, we are not gold men, and that's why we don't write books and we don't earn millions of dollars. But he said if IQ, if intelligence worked as a mathematical axiom, the most intelligent ones would be better off compared to those that have a lower IQ. I mean, that's mathematics. Hmm? After mathematics applied. So he discovered dispersion. There was a very high range of dispersion. And there was a guy with a very high Q, but he wasn't successful in his personal life, love life, in his academic life, in his professional life. And there, there was a high dispersion in average students. Some went, were better off, others worse. He looked at the low IQs, and surprise, surprise, and this is no joke, he found out that people had bad uh, life, others uh, even uh, became ministers. <laughs> so he was really impressed by that um, discovery, so he elaborated his theory. Intelligence is not only a translucent or transparent um, castle, and uh, intelligence is surrounded by feelings, emotions, humanity, and that's why he coined the concept of emotional intelligence and spoke about empathy, teamwork, communication, feeling well, etc., etc., etc. And this led to th make this mixture, this combination of reason and emotion, lead us to have a better development. Hmm? compared to others, and he's partly right in this, in that uh, in that sense. I have another idea about emotional intelligence, but uh, I, I, I agree, I acknowledge that he's right in many things he pointed out. And what can we do? I'm not an expert in teaching, in education. I have much more in experience in the business area, disciplines, and organizing teams, but I can clearly see something nowadays in economy I, I don't want to praise the regional minister that is accompanying today us today we are doing very um, interesting things in the short term by combining professions and wisdom to competitiveness etc etc so maybe Talents need to work in their environment, varied, dispersed environments. So um, we need stimulus, co innovation, competi competitions, um, ambition for success, excellence, etc., etc. You might like these things more or less, but we tend to combine ideology with realities. But motivation, the strive to for 
in those societies in those societies where we have different actors, the governments, uh, social actors working together and that combine in different values. So ta those that underlying talent comes to the surface, starts uh, up associations, and this works perfectly well. So whenever we speak about uh, the economic development of the United States, the United States is a continent, is not a country. We could visit Palo Alto, etc. Navarra, Pamplona, could be one of those areas. We have these objective conditions so that this critical mass of biodiversity, several axes that are building up developing clusters is a, is, is a reality already. So if we are experts in history of our economy, uh, but I, I'm not an expert, but I am uh, an observer, an interested observer. So. Navarra is slightly better off compared to other regions in Spain. If we study your evolution throughout the decades, it's spectacular. You must have done something well. This is not a coincidence. So decisions, as I said before, are very important. I mean, prototype of a healthy people, generous and hardworking people. That's what defines Navarra and people. So, but here we do not only have good times, but we have, you have made important decisions, very clever decisions, very intelligent decisions. So you have an incredible opportunity. And when I had the chance to speak about with the Moderna Foundation, Moderna represents something that is really meritful. So let's think about the future. Let's think jointly because nobody tends to agree on anything specific. So let's try to find a common path and work together. And this leads to the creation of positive dynamics. And life is complex, as I said, but uh, I'm sure we will be successful, many of us. Look, in these hard moments, but interesting, very interesting um, times in terms of economy. I, I talked about ecosystems, etc. So the forum, the regional government of Spain, the region of Spain and European government. I mean, the, we are all very small. The world is very, very big. It's colossal. It's the quantic, um, quantum um, butterfly. So we don't know what uh, will happen. This is very important. You know, the history of this financial real estate crisis, everything got worse, global measures were made, were taken. And uh, we go back to 2008 with Lehman and Brothers, there is a terror fright, the phantom of the Great Depression, the American Great Depression, um, well, is unveiled. The G20 met uh, together with the Spanish. Three main important measures were um, taken, lowering the interest rates between 0 0.5 to 1.5, unprecedented decision. No, second decision, no more banks were going to be created. This could be a fair or an unfair decision. All companies can be and go bankrupt except for banks. They will always be nationalized or somehow saved. But it's good. We need to consider the whole ecosystem. Those, so no more banks um, were went bankrupt. Either they um, merged or were nationalized, etc. And the third uh, measure was taking uh, Keynes, accepting, adopting Keynes again, and taking him out of the box. In 2010, the worldwide crisis was over. There was no more global crisis. Asia, Africa, Latin America were starting to grow. So this has been restricted to Western crisis because there is a high indebtedness. There is, there are many problems and factories for several mm, uh, reasons are not here any longer, but they are somewhere else, and we will need to do something to overcome this problem. The world is developing somehow differently. Maybe this is a provocation. 
that globalization led to the world being more fair, fairer, because those that were poorest are doing are better off. So there is a balancing effect, even though we are on the hard side, because we need to adapt ourselves that in Darwinian terms to to being in a worse situation. And um, Chinese and Indians, I mean, they are doing things seriously that they are really recovering and making progress. So, so in, back in 2010, the United States said, I do not trust, I'll start the method of, metaphor of creating more dollars. And Merkel here in Europe said that we cannot spend more than what we have. Let's be grand, grandmothers again. Who's right? Uh, well, the, we could speak about this for hours, and we cannot look backwards. We need to look into the future. Japan. What did Japan do? Uh, United Kingdom. And uh, Europe indirectly has followed the same path. We are uh, borrowing enormous, huge quantities, quantities of money, and this money-making machine will increase its um, activity and never again, in, never before in the history of humanity have we had so much money. There are oceans of money floating around. There's so much money floating around. Where is are those monies? But, well, that's a theory. We don't know. And what will be the future like? So, within the possibilities, we speak a lot about the cows, well, so we don't know what will be most likely. Maybe this high quantity of money leads to inflation, so assets, real estate assets will acquire some value, or maybe there will be hyper inflation, or maybe panic, panicking. Stock markets, there will be a lot of uncertainty in stock markets, etc. So in times of uncertainty, we need to know what to do. There are two ideas. First of all, we always have to follow a north to, to know what to do, where you want to arrive, and what you do every day. And this is really important. And when I'm speaking with the Moderna Foundation about values, we said that there are several issues that are really important. I write. I call it the code of ethics for for workers, for personas y la me da igual en tres grandes grupos. Uno el mayoritario, 65% de la población aproximadamente. 65% of the populations are zombies. What are the zombies? For the living dead, they have no ideals, no nothing. They survive basic pleasures, bits of sleeping, eating, that's about it. And they can go that way, they can go that way. 35% of uh, tourists who are a bit happier, fashionable, and 5% of walkers. Some values have already been mentioned here. The uh, finish line isn't the most important thing, it's the steps that are taken each day. We know what the direction we must take. You must have a goal. Life, you, there are a lot of crossroads in life, and so decisions have to be taken. We must know where we want to go, because if we leave the path, we must know where the finish line is. The characteristics of not zombies. <laughs> Nobody knows that we are zombies. <laughs> if you're at a crossroads of life, <laughs> the, the tourist is the fashionable one. The walker is the one who adapts best. Sometimes it will go uh, going against the current, against the flow, but they must know which way, a direction to take. Let's think about where we apply talent, what systems, how to develop. I'm sure some of you make mistakes. 
but uh, you have to lay down strategies and mark out your path in life. And uh, in this case, a lot of importance is given to enjoyment onto the path that you follow and deciding what direction to take, what road to take at the crossroads. Anyway, I've, I know I've gone over my time, but uh, a lot of people of uh, people who are here today are professionals in, in this topic. You're either working in administration, education, on strategic lines, and we all have a responsibility. I get the impression that uh, some things are being doing well, so I encourage you to continue along that line. So when we uh, decide between zombies, tourists, and walkers, and we will all become walkers, and at the end, when we reach our destination, we will uh, realize that we're taking the right path.